In AC circuits, ideal capacitors do not use any power. They actually just cycle power back and forth between the source and the capacitor. When current's coming out of the source, it's charging the capacitor, building up the energy. And when current going back towards the source, the capacitor is discharging and losing energy. So even though capacitors don't actually use up any power, we can quantify how much power is moving back and forth between the source and the capacitor. And this type of power is called reactive power. To get a better understanding of this idea of reactive power, let's take a look at an example here. So I have a three volt, 60 hertz voltage source applied to a 1.326 millifarad capacitor. The impedance of that capacitor is equal to one over omega C with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. Omega C is going to be two pi F, so two pi times 60, and the capacitance is 1.326 millifarads, and that works out to, very conveniently, two ohms with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. Now, knowing the impedance of that capacitor, we can figure out how much current is in this circuit. That, of course, will be the voltage divided by the impedance, and that works out to 1.5 amps with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Now here's a nice graph that shows the voltage and the current as they're changing over time. And I can write these out as their equations. The voltage as a function of time is going to be three sine omega t. And the current, which we just figured out, has a 1.5 amp peak. So that's 1.5 sine omega t. However, the current, of course, is phase shifted from the voltage. And this is actually a cosine wave since it's at its peak at time zero. And the way that we can indicate that is adding the phase shift here. So the current is leading the voltage by pi over two radians, which is also 90 degrees. Let's not forget the units there. Now what we are interested in here is the power. The power as a function of time is going to be equal to the voltage times the current. And I can write that out, three sine omega t times 1.5 sine omega t plus pi over 2. So that's going to be equal to 3 times 1.5 sine omega t. And like I just mentioned, the sine omega t plus pi over 2 phase shift is the same as cosine omega t. So I'm going to use a little bit of trigonometry here. I still have this 3 times 1.5 but now let's look at the sine omega t times cosine omega t. In general, sine theta times cos theta is equal to one half sine two theta. This is just a basic trigonometric identity. And considering that my omega t here is the same as the theta over here, I can rewrite sine omega t cosine omega t as one half times sine two omega t. What that is saying ultimately is that my power is going to be at a frequency that is two times the frequency of the voltage and the current. And this new plot that I have here adds the power to the graph. And so you can see the power here in this sort of brownish red, and it has a frequency that is twice the voltage and twice the current, which totally makes sense based on what we've just calculated here. And if I finish my calculations here, to give me a number to represent the peak of the power here, I have three times 1.5 times 1 half, so it's going to be 4.5 over 2, or 2.25 sine 2 omega t. So that amplitude matches the amplitude that we see here for the power, and the frequency, of course, is, is twice the frequency of the voltage and the current. It's useful to see the power as it's changing over time. It gives us an idea of the sinusoidal nature of the power and that it's twice the frequency of voltage. However, we often want to know what the average power is. And going back to what I said at the beginning of this, the power that's dissipated by the capacitor, and by that I meant the, the average power is zero. And we can see that if we consider that line there to be zero, the power spends half of its time above zero and half of its time below zero. So if we're doing the average, we're basically going to be taking the area above the curve and subtract the area below the curve. And since those two areas are equal, the average power that is used by a capacitor over one cycle and, and basically over, over time is going to be zero watts. Okay, so I've just done a rewrite of my power equation here. And I have redone the amplitude of the power and split it as the voltage times the current divided by two. 
And then I'm going to split this up again. I'm going to have my 3 volts over root 2 times 1.5 amps over root 2. So that root 2 times root 2 is going to equal my half that's on the numerator there. And when we're quantifying power in a capacitor in an AC circuit, and again, it's not power that gets used up, but it is an important quantity to know how much power is going into the capacitor and bouncing back out of the capacitor and going back and forth. And that quantity, which we see right here, it can be split. Well, I've split it already, but we can identify that as the RMS voltage, and we can identify that as the RMS current. And so this quantity, which is voltage, the RMS voltage times the RMS current, we designate usually as Q, and that we call the reactive power. And it's measured in VAR, which stands for Volt Amps Reactive. So we have this power that's oscillating back and forth between the capacitor and the voltage source. We have positive power being delivered to the capacitor when the current is positive, and then when the current is negative, it's going back into the source. And we, call, we can quantify that peak amount of power as the reactive power. And I've rewritten that equation down here with a denotation to indicate that this is capacitive reactive power. Now, if we recall that the reactance of a capacitor is equal to the voltage across that capacitor RMS divided by the current across that through that capacitor, then we could also write out the reactive power of a capacitor as IC RMS squared times the reactance of the capacitor. But we could also write this out as the voltage across the capacitor in RMS squared divided by the reactance of the capacitor again. One final thing that I should note is that by convention, reactive power to a capacitive load is defined as negative. And that's because the impedance of a capacitor, we're writing this out in rectangular notation, is equal to negative Jxc. And so when I'm calculating out the reactive power of this circuit here, we figured out that it was 2.25 var. And typically, well, there's two ways that I could write that. So the, so the reactive power of that capacitor I could write that out as either negative 2.25 var, or I could write it out just as 2.25 var, and then indicate that it's capacitive reactive power. So I hope that helps you in your understanding of power in capacitors when they are in AC circuits. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Go Hexbug go. Go Hexbug go. Catch those other bugs. Go. Yeah, go.